Young Thomas McClough lived on the island position nearest to the Laird's Domain and the Western Isles. Separated by the sea, but not beyond the spying eye of his telescope, purchased from the now defunct Comet Superstore on the mainland. Thomas would spend hours of daylight gazing upon the Laird's Island from his bedroom window. He would watch the delivery of provisions by boat every Thursday. Rolled oats, oatmeal, oaty drinks, oats so simple, and Rickstein salt and pepper oat cakes, especially for the Laird. The mainland crew would bow their heads as the goods were taken and not step foot on the aisle. A swift exit was always made. <laughs> but on every other day, his attention was firmly fixed on Mallet Cove, for there every day a lassie would appear at 10 a.m., accompanied by a man in a cloak and mask, and sit on her own reading till the man returned to fetch her at sundown. The lassie was a total beauty. Thomas likened her to a perfect combination of the Australian Minogue sisters. She had the dark, long, silky hair of the sister Danny, but no the ugly face. <laughs> the arms and legs of Kylie, but without the thick hairs that blighted Danny's limbs. She had the thin, delicate feet of sister Danny, but without the extra toe and half thumb on top. But in one important respect, she bore resemblance to both sisters, in that she had plenty tit to spare. It was this abundance of surplus tit that inspired Thomas to paint, and he would spend most of his evenings painting buns and hillocks on canvas. <laughs> then he hatched a plan, and the next Thursday early in the morn, he slipped under a tarpaulin on the delivery boat and lay quite still, clutching a box of mellow bird's coffee. On arriving at the isle, he swam to Mullet Cove, where he knew his sweetheart would be waiting. She was seated in her usual spot and beckoned him with her index finger. Thankfully, the finger was a replica Kylie and not the wizened, wart-infected digit of the sister Danny. <laughs> Their eyes locked on each other's like a space probe might lock onto a larger exploratory craft. <laughs> Thomas immediately felt a rumpus along the length of his personal pipe and covered the area with the mellow bird's package. How do you do, madam? said Thomas. The lady replied, sadly in the voice of Sister Danny, Not bad, mate, but you said it. You said a fault. At that moment, Thomas noticed a long chain attached to her foot that bound her to a nearby post. How do you mean, young lady, and why are your chains so... I am but a lure to attract young men to the island so they may be slaughtered to provide meat for the laird. Talak will be here shortly to dispose of you. What's in your package? That's a large tin of mellow birds. It was a gift for you from the mainland. It truly is the world's most gentle and mellow drink. And at that, Talak appeared over the brow, brandishing a blade fashioned from the side panel of a lambretta that had fallen out of the sky many summers ago. But it was not the blade that did for Thomas, no. He died instantly when Talak removed the hood from his head, for he had the face of Diane Abbott. <laughs> the face of Diane Abbott! The face of Diane Abbott! <laughs> so there oh. you go.